There were more movements in this one particular fight than there are in the whole of the first Matrix. <laughs> it might actually be double. <laughs> um, so that's a good place to start. It's Keanu fighting 100 versions of Hugo. But the boys have created and choreographed a sequence that is so intricate and so involved. In the Burly Brawl, you see Neo being more and more challenged so that he has to raise his level of skill to combat the opposite will. Smith, my character, has no resolution, cannot conquer the opposite will. Because in that moment, there is no understanding of that, of how to do it physically. So he escapes. What's really cool is that the scene in itself has three acts. First act has about eight Smiths versus Neo. The second act is up around 25. And then the third act is uh, up to 80 Smiths in the park at once. Along the way, we start with stunt doubles and somewhat conservative Hong Kong style lock offs and quick cuts everywhere. Then as we get to the second act where there's 25 men, there'll be like a mixture of CG Smiths and head replacements and, and doubles going on all at the same time. In the third act where there's up to 80 men, these, this will be all virtual, all computer graphics, including Neo. John came to us with uh, storyboards for the uh, Burly Ball um, uh, concept at the time um, and goes through it with us and says, look, so we've got these shots in Matrix Reloaded that are going to have uh, Keanu or doing Kung Fu against Agent Smith. And uh, John goes, so yeah, there's a couple of them. Well, maybe more than a couple, five, six, seven. So we start going, well, I guess we'll have to like shoot, you know, lock up the camera and shoot multiple passes. And he goes, no, no, you're not quite getting it. It's, it's more than six or seven. It's, it's kind of 100, maybe 200, maybe, maybe 300 in one shot. Oh, OK. Huh. And then he uh, says, yeah, and uh, kind of bullet time as well. Just like the last film, the brothers have got the support to push for very difficult things. You don't want to expose the directors to too much risk. It's kind of different with Larry and Andy. Larry and Andy will take risks. And instead of us going, well, we really want to do this, it was more, you guys have got to do this. You've got to work it out. We don't care if you say it's really hard. We, we, you know, we want to support you, but you've got to be able to do it. At least half of the creativity in doing something like that is in planning the fight. So Larry and Andy and Wu Ping worked out the fight. I mean, Wu Ping choreographed it, ran it through Larry and Andy. They gave their additions to it. And then Wu Ping and his guys recorded themselves doing all the moves. And then I cut the fight together. <laughs> We didn't pre-plan the photography, and the procedure for that was to figure out, by way of Wu Ping's guys, what amazing feats Neo was going to do, figure out what percentage of that was actually capturable, and or a percentage of capture plus animation extensions, and some was just pure animation. John managed to get uh, some research funding from Larry and Andy and the, and the studio, and we set off doing a test. Three, two, one, action! <laughs> We're doing this test August 14th, 15th, and 16th, year 2000. This is our first proof of concept on this uh, idea. We've been running universal capture tests to create the synthetic face and form of Keanu for the last month and a half. 
our big goal is by October, November to start having a, a representation of all these pieces in a virtual environment. These dudes uh, obviously are uh, Wu Ping's uh, mind-blowing uh, martial arts team. They're wearing all these highly reflective balls, and these balls are being read by these cameras up here in a uh, procedure known as motion capture. 120 times a second they are flashing light. It looks like they're constant, but they're not. They're, they're really strobing and the balls being super reflective kick back every time they're being flashed. And we take the data and we begin to uh, calculate where all of the little markers on their bodies are. We have taken the motion of a, one of the best martial artists in the world and we have put it inside the form of Neo. So now we have a very capable Keanu Reeves kicking the living shit out of many dudes at once. Everything in the frame is 100% uh, computer generated, the background, all the characters. Our methods completely surround uh, three-dimensionally recording performance and, and then editing a lot of performances together into a longer performance. All we're really after is extending very difficult actions and uh, viewing that from any angle in a way that just keeps the camera running longer instead of all these brief little cuts. The park set had to accommodate a large fight where there were going to be several hundred people, I suppose. It's the sort of place where people once had lived and played and kids grew up in the playground there and had a great time and then kind of the world had moved on and just left this this void. If you can imagine maybe like a 20, 25 storey tenement park, it was like probably twice the size of an average sound stage. One of the, the wonderful things is that Owen puts so much detail into every set he builds that it can only make our visual effects look better. It's just really great. And we came in and we took 2,000 stills of the set um, as the initial pass to help us digitize every little thing from every window to every tree to the playground set. It's pretty much the only way to capture something as lush and detailed as a winter set. Oh. And we were able to use those same photographs with all the same painting and texture and detail and variation that Owen had put in there, bring it into the digital world, create this completely virtual camera moves um, that you never even think that wasn't real because it, it was sourced from the real set. It is definitely one of our favorite uh, sets. We go above it, around it, and we travel a lot. It is definitely one of the sets that demanded the most work. I'm Sister Fury, and this is Fists of Fury. Let's shoot, man. Every afternoon for nine weeks, me and 12 stuntmen on the floor went through a five and a half minute routine. I believe I had over 500 moves. Each Smith will attack Neo and perhaps lay three punches or two punches and a kick on Neo and then be dis dispatched with. They figured ultimately it was easier for me to just learn each move on the day. I actually got to know the first 10 or 15 Smith's moves, but ultimately on the day they changed anyway. So I really was learning the fight as they would in Hong Kong, which was just on the day. All the Agent Smith doubles were pretty much auditioned. We auditioned about 50 guys, acrobats, gymnasts, martial art guys, regular stunt guys. Put them through about four months of training to mimic the actor Hugo Weaving, as well as learn the fight choreography and uh, develop the skills they're gonna need for this. They have expertise in different areas. Some are acrobats, some are martial artists. Some can do performances, you know, that you would only get in a circus. Are they tough guys? They're tough guys with soft hearts, how's that? 
there were Smith lessons where I'd watch them run and, and I'd watch them walk and then I, you know, so I kind of gave them a few pointers, but it wasn't, it wasn't more than a couple of uh, lessons really. When you see the scenes, you gotta remember that's the real Hugo mixed in with like 12 of the best martial arts stunt guys around. And action! And he's holding his own pretty well. Uh, no computers. <laughs> no computers, real deal stuff. John Gata takes over and does his multi-passes and composite shots to really amplify the amount of people we have. Right. I'm totally, absolutely ready for the juggernaut of multi-pass mayhem uh, that is being inflicted upon me by the very well-written prose of the Wachowski brothers. Remember, it's the writers that invite the technological onslaught that you may see. Right now what we've got here is a motion control uh, setup. It allows us to put multiple uh, smiths into the scene without having to use the computer graphics technology. So this rig is completely repeatable. Every time the camera goes and past, we can get it to do the same move time and time again. We put one Hugo there, film him, and then we'd take the camera back, and then we'd put another Hugo there and we'd film him again. So it looked initially like you would see everyone repeat it was Hugo. By the end of the sequence, there's like 80 odd Agent Smiths. The complicated thing was working out how we were going to shoot that many Smiths fighting Keanu all at once. There are certain parts of the sequences that we had to create that that we had to map Keanu's face or Hugo's face, and we had to do things with their bodies and their look that are not real. So the challenge was, how do you generate synthetic humans? And we thought the hardest thing would be generating a human face that had the right expressions. So we build a system that we use multiple high-def cameras, use them to shoot an actor, and then we can reconstruct that actor's facial performance. Every little muscle movement, every mouth movement, eye movement, teeth movement, all of that can be reconstructed so that we can then fly around that with a virtual camera. So we can then stick that onto a live person's body or onto a synthetic body. The problem with working on actual humans is they're so recognizable. You look at humans every day, you're, you're very unforgiving when you see CG hair or a CG face or any of those things. It would take an, an animator who was basically the Picasso of his time to actually actually completely freehand a performance like that. We basically use those facial performances and we've assigned different performance on every Smith. So we had this whole process of assigning different performances to the, to the different Smiths. So they all do different things. The bullet time shot in the first movie was a little more practical. You know, the action was shot from a bunch of still cameras. This is we're sort of recreating, you know, Keanu and recreating Hugo so that we can basically put the camera anywhere and do anything. The idea was that the camera is always traveling at the same speed, it's just the motion is slowed down. No frozen motion, that was the mid 90s. We wore different clothes back then. It's sort of this blend between you know, use mocap where you, um, where the mocap works and where the mocap doesn't work, where it's just doing something that's just not capturable or just like superhuman and that's where the hand animation has to pick up. Dynamic simulation is virtual crash test dummies that um, you can just smack around and they'll react similar to how a human would react if he was smacked by a bull. You can give it an animation and then hit it with a ball and it'll react to the ball but try and maintain the existing animation that you have on it. In this case, um, basically everyone who gets hit by a pole was um, a dynamic simulation. As the shots get more developed, we add more and more smiths and once the animation's final, it can get passed to the cloth department. We worked very closely with modeling, with rigging, the animators, uh, because we took inputs from all of those and cloth was essentially sort of a hub. All the clothing that you see is uh, 
um, the way we actually get it to look so real is we get a cloth sample for each one of the characters, you know, whether it's a piece of the suit, a piece of Neo, Neo's coat, whatever, and we basically put it through this device that shoots it from many different angles, and it gives us uh, an approximation of how a particular material reacts to light and different camera angles. Then we put that into the computer system, and bingo, we get a realistic looking piece of cloth. The brothers, they wanted to really have a lot of interaction with Neo's Cassock, with his personality, or sort of have a sort of a connection with that. Once they were done with shooting, they cleaned them up and then they sent it to us so that we would be able to look, get a look and feel of the weight of it, as well as how it wrinkled and bent, and as well as try to see how well it fit, and uh, little details like, you know, how many snaps, were on there and, how, and you know how far away the buttons are from the collar. So there was a lot of a lot of attention paid <laughs> to this and, and Agent Smith's outfit. Both the animation and the cloth get passed to the color and lighting department, and they're the guys that you know uh, render render it, make it look so real. We spend a lot of time developing new image-based lighting techniques. We have the ability of extracting every single light in the set so that it looks com it's completely mathematically um, represented in our computer graphics scenes. One of the big things that makes any computer-generated object look the way it looks is the way in which um, the light in an environment plays on it. If we're ever adding a computer-generated component, we have to be able to know exactly how Bill set his lights. So we use the chrome ball that's over there to uh, tell us where everything was and how bright it was. Because it's a sphere and because it's chromed or, or mirrored, it actually reflects the entire environment. So by taking a picture of a chrome ball, you've actually taken a picture of effectively the entire environment. And what it's letting us do in one image is measure the color of the environment as seen from any given point. We now have a, a record, a measurement of the light, of the color and the intensity of the light coming into the point where the chrome ball is. I would think that the methodology of creating a master content through all those means uh, and then post photographing it and editing it and all of that stuff, yeah, I think that will become common. Animation's a difficult thing. We had a great animation team working on the burly ball and we had a ton of motion capture, but it's still hard to get them nuances in. I think it's gonna be quite a while before people can truly, truly see uh, character animation has been completely perfect. We're so accustomed to seeing fights made editorially, where you, you see a cut to a guy throw a punch, and cut to a reaction, and cut back to a wide shot, and over the shoulder. It's all done through the editorial process, and this these sequences are not done that way. They're all, there are no cuts. The camera is showing you what it wants you to see while it keeps on moving, and it's just a whole new way of seeing something occur. Gun 不記得了 these guys on this team, they've been in some of the biggest films in so many of these of the, the greatest uh, martial arts films ever seen. If you look at these faces one by one and learn their names, you will find them blanketed through the recent history of Hong Kong action films. <laughs> 
嗰啲中國棋術好嘅，陳虎嗰啲啊武武術底好嘅，李安嗰啲又係啊，即係讀啲嘢都即係都幾全面嘅，所以每個人有每個人嘅作用嘅，即係太啊啊財嘅拉屈又拉得好準嘅，即係我每個每個部每個人嘅工作量咧都都有佢特色喺度嘅。都都係睇劇本每場動作嘅劇情需要啦，即係啲劇情必須要啊！如果係打好多個人嘅，我就應該開開始啊設計，我點樣打好多人，即係點點樣啲手腳密啲啊，同埋啊唔唔可以俾啲人停啊，俾成啊，同埋單對單嘅動作，我哋點樣設計得佢有啲有啲特色，有啲漂亮嘅招數啊咁樣，即係每場每場咧都因劇本而而設計嘅，同埋。啊！同導演溝通完之後，再改良、再設計咁樣。我呢佢佢呢個琴晚嘅，哦，唔係我可以快啲，我可以快啲。佢會慢嘅，你快，佢會得慢啊！你跟得快啦，佢啲。我覺得啊，嗰場打好多個 Smith 嗰場，同埋兵器嗰兩嗰場嗰兩場 ，Park Fair 同埋啊柒偷嗰場啊，呢兩場係最難嘅，因為因為因為啊。Kendo 啊，同啊佢未從從來未曾試過打過中國兵器嘅，即係要由佢未冇一啲都冇底，一啲都唔識嘅，訓練到佢打得似模似樣咧，嗰、那個比較難咧。同埋阿柏輝嗰度咧，一個人打咁多人咧，即係喺 Kendo 嗰嚟講，又係從來未試過嘅。即係我要打到好，即係啲拳腳好密，啪啪啪啪好密，邊度邊度打邊度啊！即係呢兩場比較難啲啦。開始構思啊，都係都係導演俾俾俾俾個啊概念俾我哋，即係我我先根據導演嘅概念嚟構思嘅。但係構思嗰時啊，都幾有難度嘅，因為因為一個 Hugo 變咗成幾十個 Hugo， 一個人打幾十個啊，嗰種拳腳速速度啊，同埋嗰種高難度閃啊，即係一路構思，即係嗰嗰嗰場戲我睇我。構思得比較耐咗少少嘅，即係起碼構思咗有一個月有冇啊？應該有啊，難度比較高啲啊！啊，跟住現場拍完仲要拍 motion capture 接落去啊嘛，即係啊比較係難啲嘅嘢啦，即係一一打咁多人嘅，要手腳好密先得，即係又唔我又唔想等嗰啲。攝影夫有有一個喺度等啊，唔想即係安排呢個動作好密、好節奏、好緊湊，冇人有啊冇感覺，冇人喺度啊等招嘅。Three, two, one, action！ 冇錯。Motion capture 對我嚟講就係好新啊，即係我都係好似第一次去拍呢啲嘢，除咗啊啊 Mitch 第一集就係有少少。今日都六部嘅零人睇呢集先冇做劇集，啊、呃，即係我覺得好新啦，即係唯一我覺得覺得好嘅地方咧，就覺得即係我哋好多嘢現場我哋拍唔到嘅，即係做唔到嗰嗰嗰嗰種感覺嘅，喺冇做劇集可以做到出嚟，即係嗰啲嗰啲嗰嗰啲反應嗰啲拳腳嗰啲力啊嗰啲啊點樣點樣翻點樣飛啊，喺冇做劇集做得好過好過喺現場做嘅。一插就咁去啦嘛，仲要望一望，誒，仲望一望。即係我接到呢場嘅之之後咧，我我覺得誒以 Kendo 嚟打兵器咧，啊，打一樣嘢啊，我覺得係唔唔唔夠痛快，即係唔夠變化嘅，所以我設計佢好多變化。多打幾樣嘢，即係啊一不啊不斷咁樣換啊換兵器啊不斷啊，譬如開始打西啊西打甩咗啊啊又換支棍啊棍甩咗換把誒短劍啊換長劍啊換個啊雙雙棍打啊，即係我覺得個層次一路咁變化落去咧，個個個個個個個動作啊兵器動作個感覺啊唔會好悶，即係一路有變化，又去睇又去睇，一路轉變兵啊轉變兵啊覺得。觀眾睇落覺得會新鮮啦，即係我自己嘅構想係咁去嘅嘛。我覺得係啊，即係多變化咧，就等於多趣味。即係我哋由底下打到上樓梯，再打上二樓，再打上睇下，即係變咗多變化就多啲趣味啦。我覺得係趣味多咗好多嘅，即係有其實因為有變化先有趣味啊嘛。即係上一場啊，佢打個 A 陣係啊到拉拉斯 N 打又單手打打打打打打打。
啊，可以好輕鬆咁擋咗嗰個 Asian 啲拳腳嘅。呢呢集咧，我就呢度咧，啲鴨肌塊，顧名思義，鴨肌塊雙我樣擺平擺成翻上集，單手擋擋擋擋，但係我對方咧鴨肌咗嘅，可以擋到佢啊。擋到阿阿 Leo 嘅拳同揸到一拳，就 Leo 咧，原來都 upgrade 咗嘅，即係好好快化解嗰啲拳腳，打開佢，同埋有嘅有啲利用有啲高難度腳法啦，即係足球次旋轉踢啊，嚇點樣到後踢啊嗰啲，就加強咗佢嗰啲高難度嘅動作同埋新穎啲嘅動作，俾佢嚟表達呢場戲咧。哇！我炸！快快呀！又仲好啲嘅就係加強出嚟啦，就會好啲啦。同埋有乜嘢唔同咧？呢呢呢呢個同上集梗係絕對有啲唔同噶啦。即係起碼呢個我哋設計佢用電單車嘅頭盔嚟打，同埋我哋仲設計另外一種新嘅桌啊腳法。喺後邊踢上去嘅，即係同二十隻啦，上集冚唪唥都係有分別嘅。個頭盔打得都好有 power， 好勁嘅啫。Be strong enough, yeah. Watch the target, yeah. That feels good. Lock it. 即係攞嚟講，即即每場戲、每部戲嘅動作都唔同嘅。總總之成場嘅咧，即係喺喺車喺個貨車櫃貨櫃車頂打咧。即係我我個構想啊，整個構想都係喺危險動作過嚟啊嚟構想個車速行緊，即係我點樣打落車邊啊，點樣拉拉拉車邊啊，點樣再好啊好難咁翻翻上去啊啊打到啊幾幾乎跌落車啊！即係全部喺圍繞住係車行嗰種速度同埋啊，我哋盡量俾少少好似好危險嘅動作啊落去。嚟到增加個個個嗰個喺車頂打嗰嗰嗰種特色啦。太大波啦 ！Too much，too much。Okay，okay。啊，其實中做導演，即係仲做作導演都係誒，即係誒啊一一種興趣嚟嘅，但係兩樣我比較中意做導演多啲。不過做導演係辛苦好多。由頭到尾辛苦咗，做動作導演就淨係專心設計動作啊，點樣設計啲新嘅動作啊，啊有乜高難度動作設計落去啊，就專心啫。但係做導演咧就顧好多嘢，顧啊嗰啲文戲啊，顧成場戲嘅包裝啊，顧劇本啊，好多嘢啦。就兩樣嘢咧，就動作導演輕鬆啲，啊淨係做導演咧就辛苦啲。但係我都興趣做導演多啲。A chance to Helski has so much experience with wire work, who is a professional kung fu fighter, who has been, you know, an exceptional stuntman for eight, ten years. He's really been through all of the elements that this picture asks. First and foremost, I'm Keanu Reeves' stunt double. Also in charge of the training facility to make sure the Hong Kong guys get what they need. Kind of liaison between them and the stunt department. Also kind of in charge of the, the martial arts stunt work, like uh, setting up our rigging, making sure that uh, the stunt aspect of the fight scenes go well. Kind of the assistant stunt coordinator to R.A. R.A. Rondell, he's like the head guy. Chad is the head of this fight department as far as I'm concerned. I'm out of bounds. I'm a guest on his set. Chad seems to hit a lot of people. <laughs> A lot of the people here have a lot of good things to say about him, but he really hits a lot of people. We've all had a few uh, knee problems. I had like two knee surgeries, two shoulder surgeries, busted my ankle, busted my hand, a lot of bruises. Mostly on this show, it's a lot of bruises. 
Dad works harder than anybody I know. He's the first one in the morning. He's the last one training at night. He's the one training on the weekends. He's the one who's the motivator. My guys are tired. Look at him there. This guy's asleep. This one still doesn't know what job he's on. This one can't remember his name. He keeps his crew working day in and day out. And uh, it, it shows in his work. I just want you to know, pay attention on the tax department. He's the most rich stuntman in America. <laughs> the tax department pay attention. Is it all in good hands for Chad? Good answer. Yeah, you couldn't what? be in better hands. We are here because of you, Mr. Anderson. We're here to take from you what you tried to take from us. Purpose. What's happening to him? Don't know. Yes, that's it. It'll be over soon.
Hi, this is John Gaeta. What we're gonna be looking at now is the anatomy of a burly brawl shot. We like to call it the drop-down shot. In the year 2000, Steve Scrosh drew these boards to illustrate the beginning of what we would consider the final act in this three-act fight. We begin in the God's eye view and we uh, spiral down to something that graphically emulated a, a hurricane. Originally, the hurricane idea was not as evident. Wu Ping and us on stage realized that the fight could potentially be interesting if it had the master revolving sort of circle around Neo. And what you're seeing here is the capture for Neo and his immediate adversaries. These would be sophisticated, uh, choreographed pieces uh, that uh, Wu Ping and the Hong Kong team would work out, there would be like hundreds of these captures to choose from, creating a vast library, which could be erector setted, if you will, by the uh, layout team uh, with the computer graphics side of this. The UCAP process is incredible uh, when it's being fully realized, as we'll see later on the Super Punch. The part of the process that involves getting the expression performance is perhaps the most complex in which the actor needs to, in a, in a somewhat restrained uh, situation, uh, provide an emotional sort of facial expression, which is captured and processed and assigned on an individual basis. For some time, we were speculating whether we wanted to try any scenes with articulate speech in close-up shots with CG humans. And there were discussions that I was having with Larry and Andy about possibly taking the shot where Smith says more and making that fully virtual. But, you know, as, as applied strictly for action beats, it was not necessary to apply articulate speech. However, the technology is there. So layer one primary action would be uh, Keanu Reeves and at times uh, Chad confronting the eight stuntmen. There is a circle around this circle, which will contain many more men, that will be attempting to gain access to the fight. With the virtual depiction of a fight like this, there is no reason why not to have absolute contact. In the case of this scene, the whole point is that you can actually show the impact in its full effect. So we have the fellas dressed in body armor underneath their mocap suits so that um, Keanu or Chad can smash them with full force. Okay, so here we are beginning to uh, create the preliminary versions of the virtual set. Uh, we're doing this so that we have a much better idea of scale. If we take a look at this scene, we can see how men are coming into and out of this fight from a layer just beyond the immediate foreground circle. Some hits could be the product of a Hugo Weaving running entry, a stuntman hit and collision, and then an animated extension because the Smith needed to travel quite a distance. There was a whole slew of terms from home runs to grounders and line drives that uh, the bros would, would apply so we would understand the sort of severity of the hit and the distance of the hit. At this point, you can see the design of the vortex starting to come into play. It was considered many ways almost a yin-yang type of graphic in that there would be equal numbers coming from either side and creating the type of symmetry that the Wachowski brothers love and apply so much in many of their frames. Based on our original test in 2000, we were going to have guys jumping from windows and going through windows. The other attribute about the test, which is fascinating, which we did not pursue as much, was a much more hyperactive camera that was at times quite more attached to Neo's periphery. Here is the final version uh, at long last. This is a good shot for illustrating the whole process in terms of a, uh, a wide to macro view of the process. This, this one pretty much shows you the whole thing.